Good evening everybody. Welcome to the monthly Working Mums Masterclass uh, webinar. Thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, jump online and um, listen to our fabulous presenter tonight who is Leonie Smith, otherwise known as the Cyber Safety Lady. And tonight she'll be talking about keeping your family safe online which is such a hot topic at the moment. There was actually um, a story tonight on, I can't remember if it was Channel 7 or Channel 9 news on um, cyberbullying on Facebook and, and how bad um, it can actually get. It was quite a tragic story. So I'm really glad that you're all online here and looking to be proactive about keeping yourself and your family, your kids safe online. So before we get started, I'll just step through some housekeeping for you. First of all, from a legal perspective, I just have to let you know that we are recording um, this presentation or this webinar. And the good thing is if you get called away or if one of the kids starts yelling or doing whatever they do, um, we're recording it so we upload it onto the Working Mums Masterclass website so you can watch it or listen to it at a later date and you can pause it and do what you need to do. But it's really good to stay online and, and stay in interactive and, and hear what Leonie's got to say and get involved in the Q&A and um, in the questions in the chat as well. Now another thing that I need to tell you is you can hear us, we can't hear you, um, but you can engage with us or communicate with us by using the questions chat box on the bottom right hand side of your panel or your chat um, box there too um, and just type in any comments that you've got, any questions that you have for Leone, any experiences that you want to share and feel free to interact with each other on there too. It's a really good way to keep engaged on the webinar. Um, if you have any technical problems, there's a free 1800 number that you can call. Grab a pen and paper and quickly write that down now. Um, it's 1800 356 792. If, you, if your internet connection is dropping in and out, use the landline that came out on your registration email. Um, that's a lot more secure as well. Um, and of course, the important thing to remember is to enjoy yourself. <coughs> if you are tweeting, um, then uh, the hashtag is WMMWebinar. And um, yeah, feel free to um, interact and ask us lots of questions. Now, I'm going to introduce, um, hand you over literally to Leonie. So just bear with us for five seconds while I just change presenter rights over and you'll be able to see Leonie's um, screen. And Leonie, if you'd like to introduce yourself and let them know about all the fabulous things that you've done. Hi, everybody. Yes, my name's Leonie Smith and um, I give classes uh, and workshops and presentations to parents, teachers and students on cyber safety. Um, what is cyber safety? It encompasses a lot of different things but it's basically about keeping people happy and safe online. So it can includes privacy settings and basic strategies for avoiding the nasties online and security. And that's something I'm incredibly passionate about. I have two children of my own, two boys, 15 and a half, nearly 16, 12 and a half, both power users of the internet and gaming. And so I have to keep um, right up to date to keep one step ahead of them. And they help me an awful lot, actually. I'm often running around and saying, hey guys, what does this mean? What does this do? What's this game like? Which they very reluctantly um, tell me about. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about what your kids are using and um, Penny I'd be interested in finding out from the listeners what ages their kids are. So perhaps you can, because I can't see the chat window, perhaps you can um, break in, in some, at some point when they've all yeah. said how old they are and give me an estimate of how old they are. If well, you have a look at the screen now you can see Sorry to interrupt, Leonie. We just um, we can't see your screen at the moment um, for some reason. So I'm just going to put the presenter rights back to um, myself and um, just give it one more go and um, bring it up again and see if we can get you on there. Um, and would you be able to on the on your control panel click show my screen? Just a second. 
Okay, that's what I probably couldn't see. I'm clicking all the show my screens. Okay. <laughs> Can you see my go. screen now? Okay, so we're just in the um, on slide two in the back end of the slides. So it okay, is in, so in that other screen. What I'll do is I'll click play, and you yeah. tell me whether this is working. Can you see that? Uh, yep. So we're up onto slide two. What are kids using in there? That's right. With the right. Little Twitter chickadee. Yep. Okay. All right. And um, so, I'll ask the guys to interact and uh, let us know how old their kids are. Yes, I'm, I'm interested to, to know what the age range is. Um, kids are starting to use Twitter and I'm very surprised to find out that how much they are using it. The last school that I did a talk at, there was probably about 10% that were on Twitter, which was surprising to me because Twitter is not um, as heavily used in Australia as it is in the States. Um, but I, I do believe that the use of Twitter will grow quite rapidly. Um, it's a great application for kids to use and uh, for a lot of kids that are finding their parents are friending them on Facebook and they're lacking in their um, privacy, they're using Twitter to talk to each other um, so that the parents can't find out what they're saying. Of course, um, Facebook is um, highly used amongst most kids and it's probably around about something like between 80 and 90% of kids over 13 have got Facebook accounts. Foursquare is not used very much by kids um, and I'm assuming you all know what Foursquare is but it's a check-in application basically where you can check in to say here I am at Coles, Mona Vale, blah, 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 blah. YouTube, highly used by kids and it is a social network because of all the commenting and the interaction that goes on there. Instagram is very popular with kids and getting more so and that's uh, a photography app that you use on iPhone and Android now where you can put sort of pretty filters on photos. Then you have Skype which a lot of kids are using. Um, they don't have to, it's, it's free to call each other and they, a lot of kids use it for instant messaging or they use it while they're playing a game even if they're playing different games. Sometimes my boys are playing completely different games from whoever they're talking to but they're still having a conversation on Skype. Web blogs or blogs. Tumblr, WordPress and Blogger. Tumblr is surprisingly getting very, very popular and there's a few issues with Tumblr that I found out about through the last student talk that I gave. MSN, some kids are still using that but not very many. So you probably don't have to worry too much about that. And Google Plus is being discovered by kids, probably more the te technologically advanced kids are getting onto Google Plus, they're perhaps getting away from Facebook because they're a little bit, you know, over it. So we'll, go, we'll talk about that as well. How are we going, um, Penny, with those? Yeah, with the ages. So we've got um, uh, 13, 6, um, age from 15 to 3, or oh, that's Denise, her grandkids are age 15 to 3. She's very savvy grandma, very technologically advanced herself. Seven-year-old, um, Four-year-old, seven-year-old, nine-year-old, three, eight, eleven, thirteen, thirteen, and nearly seven. So quite a, quite a mix it looks like, We're up up around to that mid-teens. Okay. okay, so the good thing is that you're getting in early, a lot of you, to find out about it. Um, having said that, though, you are all aware that um, the kids are getting online earlier as well. Every year, the kids um, getting online are younger and younger, and of course, smartphones and iPods, if they're connected to the internet, are computers as well. So, good work. Um, okay, Facebook. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the problems with Facebook, and Facebook is the one that gets probably the most publicity of all. So, many of you um, will have heard about the issues with Facebook. The terms of service for Facebook <coughs> is that you're not supposed to be 13 years of age and the reasons for that was because um, of a, um, a bill that was passed in the states called COPPA, C-O-P-P-A, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, which was passed in 1989. They didn't want uh, kids under 13 years of age having their private details um, taken online and being advertised to. That's why many, many of the sites that we're looking at tonight 
have an age limit of 13 years and under. However, saying that, 7.5 million users and growing are under 13 years of age. So my, my opinion on kids being 13 years and under is unless the parent is incredibly technology savvy and cyber savvy, savvy and knows a lot about security, um, then there's absolutely no way your child should be on Facebook. I don't recommend that any child under 13 years be on Facebook at all, but if you are and you do have a child under 13 years on Facebook, then you really need to know what you're doing. So it's a sort of a harm minimisation approach, I guess, um, and unfortunately most parents don't and that's the reality of it because um, privacy on Facebook is just so incredibly complex. For me to train someone on their privacy settings on Facebook, it takes two hours. So if you're clicking something in Facebook to enable your privacy settings and it's taking you five minutes, you're not doing it right. <laughs> and there's the reason for the the reason for, for that obviously from Facebook's point of view is that they want us all to share everything and the caveat is they say, well, you're not supposed to be on Facebook under 13 anyway. So, so privacy issues are a big problem on Facebook for adults and for kids with people sharing things and they have no idea where they're being seen. Um, they think they're sharing it with just a few people they know or perhaps a few close 300 friends, but in reality it can be seen worldwide because they haven't got the privacy settings up correctly. And having said that, there is no such thing as 100% privacy on Facebook because only one of your friends has to have open privacy settings and the minute they comment on something that you've posted, it goes out to all their friends, all their friends' friends and anybody else who cares to look at it. So bottom line, don't post anything on Facebook that you don't want some nutter over in the States to get a hold of and publish in his own way. Um, bullying and ridicule um, and all the posts can be recorded. So this simple way of recording posts even if people take them down after they've been posted which is to screenshot and a lot of kids know how to do that. You basically take a photo of the screen. I mean you can do it with your iPhone or, or any camera phone if you wanted to but you can do that online. Um, all the photos and videos that you put on Facebook um, can generally be downloaded or copied. Um, it's really easy to download anybody's photos. Um, you just go into the photo screen and click options and then click download and there you have it. So that can be used for anybody's purposes. And you can get viruses on Facebook, people sharing things that have got viruses attached to them that have a link that goes somewhere that they shouldn't. And of course stalking predators and fake accounts. Um, the last talk that I gave to a student group, one of the girls came up after the talk and she hadn't spoken previously to the teacher about this but somebody had made a fake account with her name on it and her image and they were using it to bully and ridicule her. So we worked on that after the talk and got that taken down. Um, YouTube, same again, you're not supposed to be 13 years of age and have a channel. And once you have a channel on YouTube, you can interact on YouTube, you can like things, unlike things, vote them up, vote them down, comment and all that kind of stuff. Um, YouTube's not too bad as far as adult content goes, but it's generally um, only taken down when somebody reports it. Um, uploaded pictures and videos can be downloaded even though it's not easy. There's plenty of apps out there and links where you can, where you can do that and also you can record whatever is on your screen using um, screenshot apps. There's lots of bullying that happens in comments so if your kids are uploading videos of themselves or of things that they're filming and they allow comments, bullying and bad behaviour in comments is rife on YouTube. It can be very, very upsetting for kids. Um, yes, you can get exposed to adult material and it's, it's bad enough. Um, I would suggest that you know a 16 year old might be shocked by some of the things that you'll see up there. Accounts, accounts on YouTube can easily be hacked which means that somebody can take over the account and upload all kinds of things um, to embarrass you. Skype, MSN and Google, um, all of these uh, which can be um, 
you can get unwanted approaches by strangers. So if your kids are using Skype, there are some basic uh, privacy settings on Skype that you should know about, and I'll show you a, a, a picture of that in a minute to show you where they are. Make sure with those accounts that you do set those up so that no one can contact um, your kids on Skype or MSN without first being on their friends list. Um, embarrassing pictures or messages can be sent through Skype and MSN, obviously, and passed around, and all the transmissions can be recorded or saved through the same method that I talked about with recording your screen. Um, there are stalking and cyberbullying that can happen on Skype if somebody gets hold of your Skype name and they're continually uh, contacting you. You can block them, but they can always then create a different account and get through to you that way. Um, there's webcam privacy issues with Skype as well. My kids don't generally use the webcam um, on Skype because you never know who or what is going to be walking behind you while you're having a conversation. So we have a rule in our house that if the webcam is ever used, that everybody in the house has to know it's on so that we don't have any of those issues. Fake accounts can also be made on those as well to disguise who people are. Now, am I going too fast? Is everyone keeping up? Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no you're, you're right. I'm just, um, just thinking about how, you know, when you go online and when you go onto social media, you do it to connect and to have fun. And it's quite scary to think about the maliciousness that does exist out there as well and that you do have to protect yourself from it. Yes, yes, you do. And you always have had to do that. And you have to know what to do if you do get um, attacked or bullied or there's a nasty comment. And that means knowing where the blocking um, settings are on any application that you're using and looking at all the settings. I mean, you can't really do anything wrong. If you um, start to use an app on your phone or on the computer and you start looking at settings, really go through them all um, and make sure I guess the language can be a little bit confusing, but mm. things like geo geolocation, that is where any app, um, either on your computer or on a phone, says where you are. So they're using the GPRS setting in your phone to say, here I am at such and such an address. Most of the time it's okay if you're not taking photos in your home, unless you, you know, you're at a, a location you'd rather people not know about. Mm. Um, I have most of the geolocation on my phone and on my um, computer turned off. The only thing it really affects, I find it difficult to use Twitter without it. Twitter doesn't like not having geolocation on. Um, I have it turned off on my Instagram because I use Instagram quite a lot. Actually, that's um, what um, Charmaine, one of the, um, the attendees, has just mentioned that um, she's concerned because Instagram, recent, well, in the last few days, had the photo map suddenly appear. That's right. Yeah, but I understand is that if you take your um, your location settings off in your iPhone or in your phone settings, then it, you're safe enough. It can't pick up where you are. Yeah, that's right. You have mm. you can take those settings off, and I do that. Mm. Um, however, the ones that you've already uploaded with geolocation will probably show up on that map. Um, when you get the update on Instagram, as I did a couple of days ago, as mm -hmm. soon as you you open it, it says approve these photos for the map. So I have I haven't actually gone through with mine because I don't think mine. Have, I mean, there might be one or two that's got through before I turn the location settings off, and I'll have to check that. But do go through and make sure that none of the photos show up. Um, I, as some people think that kind of thing is fun, you know, to show where they are when they took photos, and it depends on the purpose of why you're taking the photos. I mean, if, if you're a bird watcher, for instance, you wouldn't use an iPhone to take bird photos, but I'm just trying to think of an example. But, you know, and you wanted people to know where the photos were taken, you might use that. But the problem is once you enable the geolocation, unless you remember to turn it off, the next time you take a photo of your, your kids at home or whatever, mm. it'll be on and you'll show your location. And unfortunately, there's been some very unscrupulous um, developers who've managed to link things with geolocation together so that they actually, actually turns it into a bit of a stalking app mm. to find out where people live and who they are. Um, with kids using it, what they're doing is they're not understanding that the that Instagram is going out 
live on the web and many of them are taking embarrassing photos and posting them up there with names on there of people as well as the geolocation. So if your kids are using Instagram, you need to go into their, their phone and make sure that all the privacy settings and everything are on and talk to them about the type of photos that they're taking. Um, I, my, my advice to most parents is if they're under 16, don't post photos of yourself online. I just don't trust any online platform with photos of my kids because I've just heard too many horrible stories of those photos being um, abused for other purposes. Not just, you know, some of the stories we've heard, the high profile ones like being used in advertising, but people collecting them for their own purposes. Or somebody at school decides they, you know, they're going to have a go at your child and they're looking for photos online of them. So you have to be really, really careful. Okay, so the privacy settings on Instagram, you basically go into the privacy settings and click that those photos are private. You can do it that way so that they only get shown to um, a list of friends or people that they want them to, to be shown to. Okay, these are the real bad ones and most of you have got kids that are well under the age of 16 but it's a good idea to keep an eye out for all of these things as they grow older. There's all these different um, online um, apps on phones and on computers where kids can basically use their webcam to video themselves talking straight to camera and it goes out onto the web totally uncensored and I sort of did a little bit of a uh, investigation on some of these recently, particularly the, the younow.com that somebody alerted to me and it was absolutely horrifying. Um, that little girl that's up the top right hand corner, she's 10 and I don't think her parents, I hope, I hope or I don't hope that her, par her parents have no idea what she's doing and she's basically just look, talking to camera, showing her dollies and talking about things that 10 year olds do to a whole bunch of strangers. So anybody can watch her talking and you can imagine the type of people that are watching her. And down the side of that video running is um, a chat a chat room or a chat log going on. So they can ask her questions. And the way that, that these things work, this you now one does, is people vote you up. So the more people that vote or like your video, the longer you get to stay on and you get rewards for staying on longer. So it tempts these, these kids think it's all a lot of fun, but unfortunately they're being seen by absolutely anyone and these places like Chat Roulette, You Now, and Scout and Formspring are heavily populated by pedophiles. And the bullying in the comments on all of those things is absolutely rampant. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm over 18. I wouldn't allow it. <laughs> I will not allow my kids to be on something like that um, under 18. Thankfully, they're not. Um, the other thing they're doing is showing their homes. There was one one kid who was probably about 14, I guess, and he was carrying his computer around and showing his entire the ins entire inside of his house. Here's the TV, you know. <laughs> Goodness. So that's right. So all you have to do is is find that same kid with a geolocation, find out where he lives and you'll figure out how to break into his house pretty easily and you'll know where everything is. It's just, it's really naive, incredibly naive. Okay, and of, obviously all those videos can be, you know, kept by people and recorded and used again. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about games now. Um, some of uh, some of you will have kids that play games and I'll talk about some of the games and, and how it all works with online games, off, offline games, single player games um, and the ratings. The ratings um, are about to change in Australia and I'll talk about that. A multiplayer online game or an MMO is where you play online, the software and the game looks the same for everyone who joins you. So if you can see that little video going on there, all those um, characters in the game, they're all different people playing together if they're playing online. And this is Halo that we're looking at now, which is rated MA15+. 
it's not a highly violent game. It's a first person shooter game. First person shooter means you can see a gun in front of you and you're wandering around shooting things. And it's from the first person point of view. Okay. Facebook games. Facebook games are really addictive. Um, there's lots of different types of them. And there's lots and lots of them. And they entice you to keep playing. So even they, and they want you to spend money. So a lot of the kids obviously don't have their Facebook account linked up to a um, a credit card. But when you're playing these games, they're continually asking you to share the game with your friends, to broadcast your your um, your score, and to keep up scaling and buying more. So just be really careful of Facebook games. There's another one, Hidden Chronicles. That's like a, it's like um, a search and find game. So you've got to find the hidden objects around it. It's pretty harmless actually. Most of the games on Facebook are fairly harmless as far as um, the violence or adult content goes. But you know there are a couple of sort of kill the zombie type splatter games. They're very cartoony looking, but they're, they're very addictive. A single player game is a game like this one which is called Skyrim. And at the moment it's not online, although they're developing a version that will be. So your kids will just play this by themselves at home. Nobody else can join them online or anything like that. So from a safety point of view, single player games are safer and they vary as far as the level of violence and the adult content. This one is a real fantasy game. Um, it has got a fairly high level of violence, but it's not as bad as some. And there's quite a bit of um, storytelling and stuff in it. So out of all the sort of slash and shooting games, I quite like this one, actually. And my um, nearly 16-year-old is quite a keen player. It's beautifully, um, the graphics and everything are absolutely stunning. So you can understand why kids really like this stuff. Talk a little bit about age restrictions. Um, I don't know how much each of you know about the um, age restrictions on games. They're not quite the same as movie uh, restrictions as they stand at the moment. Um, early next year there will be an R18 plus restriction um, being added in the shops. And what that means is some of the games that are already being sold that are classified MA15 plus might be moved up into that ranking because some of them are pretty bad. Grand Theft Auto is one of the one of the worst ones, um, and another one that my son brought home the other day that I made him stop playing. Oh, it was awful, absolutely awful. They were all zombies being killed, um, but that's kind of like just an excuse to kill some humanoid thing. It was just horrible, blood spurting everywhere, limbs falling off. <laughs> So I'm quite in favour of the R18+, plus because I think that that means um, most of the, um, the computer game stores um, are very strict with these regulations. I know with my son, he's nearly 16. He certainly looks like he's nearly 16. And when he wants to buy um, an M15, M15 game or an MA15 game, he has to produce identification or I do. So that means that some of the games that really should be uh, categorised at R18 um, will actually be that. And then you have E, G and PG like you do with the movies, M, MA15. So rule of thumb really, um, if your kids are um, 15 and over then M or MA15 is okay for them. And But just be aware that there's some big differences between the levels of adult content and violence in the MA15 plus genre from Halo, which is not that violent, right through to Grand Theft Auto, which is full of, you know, pedestrians mm -hmm. getting mowed down in cars and in some cases there's sort of pole dancing and prostitution, drugs, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're buying for your kids in a store, ask, go to a good computer store, don't go to somewhere like uh, Kmart where the people there that are, that are um, selling the um, the games aren't really that knowledgeable. Go to something like EB Games or, or one of those stores and ask the guys there for recommendations. They're generally pretty good and they know what they're talking about. And if your kid's buying it online, Google the name of the game, 
have a look at their terms of service, just do a search for terms of service on Google for the game and find out what the age limits are. Um, there's also a really good website that I have a link to on my website which has got rate, it's got um, reviews for different games which is pretty good and you, lots of different people have reviewed the games and can tell you you know what they think what the age range is and what they're suitable for. Okay so the most fail safe way of protecting your kids online is to teach them online safety in much the same way as we do with swimming lessons or crossing the road or anything else. We can't always be looking over their shoulder. They might be playing online at a friend's place. And that's a real that's a real dilemma as well. You know, if you've got your kids have got a friend and their parents have got different levels of um, you know what they will allow and what they don't allow, it's that can be really tricky. And I, I guess that applies across the board to everything that we let our kids do. So teaching your children what their limits need to be and what you feel is right for them is the most important thing and what to do if things go wrong. Um, when my kids were a bit younger, I definitely had a rule that they weren't allowed to play M-rated um, video games and there was a boy up the road whose parents said, either let him play everything or didn't know what he was playing. And they actually used to say, we're not allowed to play this, can we play outside? And they actually did that. So it's not unheard of. Mm. The other thing is to teach them that everything that they put online and post online stays online. Nothing ever really gets deleted. Um, and it can be copied really quickly and all of us have, have heard stories about politicians or celebrities that have tweeted something <laughs> highly inappropriate or embarrassing, tried to get rid of it, somebody's taken a screenshot of it within three seconds and it's all over the net. And kids know how to do that. When I, the last talk that I gave students I asked how many of them knew how to do screenshots and probably about 80% of them did and that means that they can copy everything they see. Obviously never give out street addresses or phone numbers on the internet and you do have to tell kids these things. Don't assume that they've got common sense and they'll know it because they may not. Never give out passwords or login information other to a trusted adult. There is a bit of a trend for kids to share passwords at the moment and that's dangerous if the child gives it to someone else or they become non-friends and then their account can get hacked. The other thing is that they should log out of everything. So when they're playing a game or they've got um, Facebook open or Skype, make sure they log out when they finish so that somebody else can't jump over and take over their account and do something embarrassing. This is happening quite a bit at schools. There are a lot of schools that now have um, BYO laptops or the kids are getting laptops much younger, even in primary school and sometimes even though they're not supposed to be on Facebook on, during school, they might be and this is what's happening. Some kid in the classroom jumps on their account and then uh, posts something really embarrassing and inappropriate from their account. Leone, can I ask about, um, sorry to interrupt, can I ask about phones no. because um, you know so many teenagers um, and younger kids, tweens have phones as a safety measure which ironically can sometimes make them unsafe. But you know how you've got Facebook and um, Twitter and YouTube and everything accessible on there. Can you put security um, on it to make sure that that doesn't happen if one of the other kids or somebody picks up your child's phone is yeah. it can easily they can easily go into their Facebook account etc how do you put securities on your phone okay well I'm go I'm getting to that okay great <laughs> we're covering phones smartphones and dumb phones <laughs> uh, because phones um, it's getting more and more increasingly difficult for, for parents to monitor as well and yeah. that's another way that is probably more common than not that the kids are hacking into each other's Facebook accounts through their phones, particularly if they're going over 3G rather than the Wi-Fi at school. The Wi-Fi's at most schools have firewalls on them yeah, and they, they don't allow them to have access to Facebook and um, social networks. So what the kids do is they're carrying around their smartphones with them at school on 3G and of course if they leave their phone somewhere yeah. and they don't have those on, then that's how their accounts are getting hacked because Facebook accounts get hacked a lot. Yeah. Um, just getting back to this mm. with the stranger danger thing, you need to take them through and give them some examples of um, where they should come to you and tell you when somebody's approached them in much the same way as you, 
as you do when they start to, you know, when you start to tell them about stranger danger in real life. So the sort of things that um, a predator or a pedophile might do is they're going to ask you, first of all, they're, they're someone you don't know. They can present as someone who looks harmless, so they might present as another child. In fact, they're an adult. You don't know if you're meeting a stranger online who they really are. There are voice changes as well, so even if the child was talking to them on Skype or through a game, it's very, very easy for these people to use what's, what's called a voice changer to make their voice sound like a female or a child. Really easy. Um, so first, you know, rule number one, don't befriend strangers online. And then if someone does approach you and starts asking you questions about, you know, what, you, what your real name is, how old you are, um, do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, what school do you go to, even if it's the child thinks they're talking to a child, that's when they need to come and tell you. So you need to give your kids the, um, the guidelines as far as that goes. With social networks, the best thing to do is to limit the amount of friends that you have on it. Um, I had to sort out a situation for a client where her son, who was 11, 11 on Facebook, he was supposed to have an account, but he sneakily added himself to Facebook. When his mother found out about it, he had 300 friends on Facebook. And they were aged between his age and younger and up to 19 and 20 years of age. So we had to delete all those friends, which took an awful long time because you can't do a bulk delete on Facebook. You have to do it one by one. It takes about three keystrokes for each delete. And he was opening himself up to not only adult content, because what kids of 11 share on Facebook and you know adults of 19 and 20 share on Facebook are two different things, as well as opening himself up to potentially being bullied. So what I suggest to most parents is if your kids are on Facebook, to keep it an exclusive club. Don't just friend everybody. Do, certainly don't accept friendships for, from someone you've never met in real life and keep it small. Really keep it to a small group of friends because if you start friending friends of friends, kids in other forms, your risk of bullying and somebody saying no, something nasty to you is a lot higher. Um, teach your kids as they're getting older not to arrange parties and meetups via SMS, um, sorry, via Facebook because we living on the northern beaches have heard all the stories about those parties that go absolutely nuts and the police are called and the houses are trashed um, and that's because it gets posted on Facebook. Um, one of the students that I, that I spoke to suggested what about a Facebook group and you can do that but the problem is that if somebody does invite someone to the Facebook who then posts it on Facebook, it, it's all over. Um, I suggested um, paper invitations but I was laughed at. <laughs> Just don't have kids' parties. I'm not allowing any kids' parties around at my home. Not until they're 25, 30. Um, okay, so ask first when using a webcam and taking pictures. So if your kids are taking pictures with their smartphones, they really need to ask permission before they do that. Um, they're teaching them that at school as well because those pictures can end up on Facebook. And you know, if you are going to take a picture with your smartphone and st stick it up on Facebook, you need to ask permission. Teach them how to use the privacy settings. So don't just, you know, you might think to yourself, if I teach the kids how to use privacy settings, they'll disable them. There are some on smartphones that require your password to change them, and you can do that, but it depends on your relationship with your child, how trustworthy they are, um, and their age, I guess. But as far as the privacy settings in Facebook and stuff goes, they should really know where all of those are and how to block um, somebody that's um, bullying them or annoying them. Um, tell them not to post personal photos online. It's the worst thing you can do, any personal photos. If you're going to post a photo of your cat, that's probably okay. But until they're over 16, I wouldn't recommend it because they'll they can be easily abused and I've seen that happen time again where somebody's just downloaded a photo of someone on Facebook and then opened up a fake account with all the photos on there, doctored all the photos, put people's heads on nude bodies and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty horrific. 
don't tag people on Facebook without permission. So you've got to teach them that so that you know what tagging on Facebook is where you click on someone's face and you start typing their name in and if they're on Facebook that name will come up. Um, a lot of kids use that to bully people. So they find a really horrible picture of something and then tag the person's name on, on the picture. Um, and that can be a real invasion of privacy as well. Teach them not to join in what's called flame wars. So if somebody starts to say something nasty in a, in a thread, either on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, that they don't join in because those things can get out of hand very, very quickly. That's good advice for adults as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't feed the trolls. <laughs> don't join in bullying behaviour or trolling behaviour. Um, we need to te teach our kids a lot more these days about sticking up for each other and not joining in because unfortunately this kind of mob mentality takes over and then the person who's being bullied um, is completely helpless um, and other people, it becomes like a, you know, some sort of mad feeding frenzy. Don't respond to bullying or name calls. So the rule of thumb is if you are, have got something online and somebody starts um, trolling you or bullying, trolling is when somebody just saying something nasty to get a rise out, out of everybody, um, the best thing you can do is actually not respond to it because what you're doing by responding to it is actually feeding them and it gets worse. You're better off blocking that person and alerting um, the, the application or the platform that it's happening on that something um, has happened. If it's bad enough, learn how to take a screenshot of it and use it as evidence and that's really important. Um, my son was being really badly bullied on Facebook when he had an account, he's got rid of his account since um, and I took a screenshot of it and I was able to go to the school then with the screenshot of what had happened because the kid as soon as he found out that I was looking at it deleted the post but I had the screenshot so we were able to show his parents what he was doing in the school and action was taken so make sure you do that because otherwise it becomes a sort of a you know, they said, we said type of situation. Teach your kids not to be a bully and explain what that means because, you know, don't just, again, don't just assume they know what being a bully is and there's a fine line between teasing someone in a nice way and being a bully but when you're actually online, if you're typing it out, things don't seem as funny as they perhaps should. Um, you don't see online often the facial expression or the body language of somebody who's saying something um, and it can be really, really hurtful. So, you know, write, show some examples to kids of what being a bully is because um, not all of us have beautiful angel kids, somebody's kids out there being a bully. Um, try and get your kids to report the bullying and to take a stand and this works probably better when they're younger than when they're older. They do get to a point where they get very fearful that they will be um, victimised even further if they do re report it. Um, so they, ha they have to have a safety net somewhere safe or some person that they can go to where they feel safe where it's not going to get worse. Um, the schools have a big part in this because it often happens amongst the kids going to the same school. If the schools don't react in the right way, it can actually make it worse and then the kid will never ever tell anyone ever again that they're being victimised or bullied. Never send embarrassing or inappropriate pictures via YouTube or, or by phone and you do have to spell that out. There are a lot of girls on Facebook particularly who are taking photos of themselves in very compromising positions and they haven't got a clue. So you might see a friend's you know, young daughter on Facebook and she's lying like a sort of Lolita on her bed, which is what I saw <laughs> with a 12-year-old friend of my, my son. Um, and they don't, they, they, they're trying to be grown up, they're trying to look grown up, but really it's just incredibly inappropriate and um, that can be held against them at some point in the future. There's some rules for kids. Don't spam people. Now spamming is when you do something over and over and over and over again and it becomes annoying. That is one way that you'll end up getting told off or being abused. So if you've got something exciting happen, don't go on and on and on. Sort of mentioning it twice over two days is probably enough, three times maybe. 
um, be careful about the comments that you write. They can be taken the, the wrong way and you need to explain to them about, you know, using smiley faces and just be very aware that you, of, of how you say things. Um, the other thing is that what a lot of kids do, um, they're either trying to be funny or they are being bullying, is that they flag comments or they report a profile out of anger. Um, and that could be, that can be really bad for the child that that happens to if their account gets taken down. Usually with Facebook and YouTube, um, they will actually look at what's going on. So even if you, if somebody flags a comment or an, wrongly or a profile incorrectly, Facebook won't automatically take it down without looking at it. So they will make sure that that person isn't being victimised because it happens quite a lot with adults and with kids. So talk to them about that. If they do feel that they want to flag something um, or report it because they're finding it offensive, get them to come to you first to talk about it to find out whether it is something legit legitimate because um, it might be something really small and flagging something like that might, you know, result in that person sort of getting on the radar of YouTube or Facebook um, unfairly. Don't expose anybody else's identity online. So it's one thing, you know, not to shout out to the world who you are and where you live. Don't forget not to do it to your friends or anybody else because that's a privacy violation. Don't post angry posts. I think we all need that one. <laughs> so a couple of deep breaths. <laughs> Go for a walk around the block, ask somebody's opinion. Um, kids will do that, you know, they get upset about something um, and then, you know, the next day it doesn't look so good and it incites people, so we need to tell them that. Um, and don't post photos or videos online, which I've said before, particularly if they're under 16, because they can be misused. How are we going out there? Any questions you think I might? Um, able to answer? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of comments around um, around you know behaviours and and things like that and um, questions around um, whether you should have your family computers and things like that in a public space in the house or what happens with laptops and and what happens with phones as as well and how do you, how do you how do you manage yeah. what the kids are doing with their yep. online time? Um, if at all possible, you should have desktops rather than laptops for your kids. And right. now that's getting harder and harder with many of the schools mm. asking parents to buy laptops for the kids to bring into school. But you can still make a rule in the house that the laptops don't go into the bedrooms. Now with my kids, they're nearly 16 and 12 and a half and they still have their computers in the family room, even at that age. I get a couple of complaints every now and then, like they'll be making a noise, like one will, one will be being annoying and the other one will say, oh, I think it's time I had my computer in my bedroom. But <laughs> they know what my position is on that. Um, and the, the most important thing for that is that they, you need to be, it, it's so much easier than trying to spy on what they're doing. If they're in the family room or somewhere that's a high traffic area, you can hear whether something's upsetting them you can hear whether they're getting into an argument, you can see if they're looking at something that it's inappropriate most of the time. Um, it's much easier to monitor if you have it in that situation. Now what a lot of people do with the smartphones and the iPods is they don't allow the smartphones and the iPods to connect to the Wi-Fi or they only allow the smartphones and iPods connect to the Wi-Fi in a particular room and you can do that by changing the password on your Wi-Fi. So basically, you're the only person who knows what the password is to your Wi-Fi and you can switch it on and switch it off when you need it or don't have on on it, on it all. And really, for kids under 10, having Wi-Fi access on the iPod, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. Um, there are um, parental controls on, um, on uh, all phones. Most phones, like the smartphones, they've got parental controls on them, so Android do and an iPhone do and I've got an article I think on my website that talks takes you through and shows you how to do the the, um, the parental settings. You basically just go into the settings and go into restrictions and you can turn off anything you don't want them to look at. Um, you can also set the phone so that it's um, has different levels so it's got like um, 
17, 16, 15, um, all the way down and it will restrict the content that goes on it. It's not fail safe. YouTube's one of the hardest things to, to moderate. With YouTube it's almost a bit like a walled garden. You either have to take it off the phone or leave it on and there's no filter on it. And although YouTube are pretty good at taking down porn, there's some pretty pretty adult stuff on there that I wouldn't be my, keen my 15 year old looking at. Um, so you know you can't really monitor that. I'm going to show you just some quick settings in a in a little bit also that will help you with YouTube and Google um, that you can put on the browsers as well. Um, so as far as keeping um, supervision on those, there are a lot of apps and stuff that are coming out that are basically parental spy apps, and they are a lot of hard work. The problem with a lot of those apps is that you don't develop a level of trust with your kid. There are some other things that you can do that have much more long-term value. If you've got a child that you've already lost control of, who is oppositional, you're having a really big discipline problem with them, and they're downloading porn, they're gambling online, they're looking up drugs, <laughs> whatever, that's when I would probably use one of those spy apps but unless that's what they're doing, you're developing a sort of a false sense of security by putting those apps up there, which kids do learn to get around. All they have to do is Google anything to find out how to get around things. Um, and it's sort of, um, it's, it's slowing down the progress of learning to be a responsible person online. So some of, the, some of the things you need to do is you need to have a good open dialogue with your kids. Kids need to be able to come to you and ask you questions. If they think you're a complete, if they think you're going to lose it and freak out, then they won't tell you, so you have to be calm about it. If they think you haven't got any interest in what they're doing and you put everything down that they're doing, that you kind of look at their social media and their gaming with complete derision, they, they will not come to you. If they think everything is going to be taken away, they won't come to you. So you need to, like everything else with your kids, with talks about drugs and sex and all that kind of stuff, you need to, to, to develop a safe, a safe space where, yes, there will be consequences if they do the wrong thing, but, there's a, but you will take action where you can. You will find out how to fix things if they get broken and you will help them. And some of the things you can do is by developing um, your education online learning what it is that they love being online because I know a lot of parents have got like they haven't why are they gaming? Why are they doing this? I can't understand why they want to watch YouTube. It's just full of a lot of stupid videos. So you need to sort of jump in a bit, get your boots wet and have a look at what they're up to. So one of the things you can do is to ask them questions about what they're doing. Not in a snoopy way, but in a curious way at the right time. And Obviously, if they've got their gear in the family room or whatever, then that's going to be easier than trying to, you know, get them to talk to you behind closed doors in their bedroom. Um, so some of the things you can do is you can send them interesting articles via email on their games or updates, which is what I do with my kids. You know, I'm, I keep an eye on what's going on, and probably most of you wouldn't do that um, because you're not a nerd like me. Um, you can alert them to scams and virus warnings if you hear about them in the news. Often they get just in the mainstream news. You'll hear Facebook's got a new virus and this does this or whatever. Talk to them about that. Um, find a video game you can play with them. I've been starting to do some, um, some reviewing of video games on my website. I'm, I certainly wouldn't call myself a gamer, but I do love some computer games. And... Um, I've been playing it a few of them, and I don't, I don't like anything bloodthirsty. I don't like anything violent. I don't like killing anything, <laughs> so I only like the pretty ones. <laughs> but I do play a little bit with my 12-year-old with some of the pretty ones, and I'm putting some more of those online. So, um, what it does by playing a couple of those games, even if it's just words with friends, it gives you an indication, idea of what they get out of it. If you imagine your most favourite movie or TV show or book when you were growing up and turn that into a sort of almost 3D experience that you can interact with, you might get an idea of why they love doing what they're doing. 
because it's challenging as well as, you know, exciting their, their interest in fantasy and story. Um, ask them about the social media platforms that they're playing. Try not to be judgmental when you're asking about it. Just do it from curiosity and then go away and Google it. <laughs> Find out what it is, you know. Um, you can always send me a, a, a message or whatever to find out what I think about it. What to do about cyberbullying? Okay, well we've, we've talked about this before. Screenshot the bullying, have proof. You can even do that on Xbox. Actually, I don't even know how to do it on the Xbox, but we did it on the Xbox. My son was getting these really weird messages on Xbox and he managed to take a, a photo of it. So even if you can go up to the screen with your, with your camera, take a photo of it. Um, so that you have proof. Block all access. If, the, if, it's, if it's really bad, it's not just you know two friends having a falling out, but if it's really bad, find out where all the blocking is on Facebook, on Skype. It's pretty easy. Most of the time you can click on a person's name and it'll bring up those options on any platform. Block this person. Get rid of this comment. And stop your child responding. That's a, a long-term thing. Um, it's, it does take years and years for kids not to do that because usually the first thing they want to do is fight back and fighting back with cyberbullying is the worst thing you can do. So it, it does take some persistence to get your, your child to respond with silence. Alert the school or the, whatever the, the connection is with your child if it's appropriate. Don't approach the other parent. Um, I had a situation where I did approach another parent and that was somebody that I'd, I'd known for years and years and years and I knew she'd be really upset about what happened. But she was fine with it but the only problem was that it just created a really awkward situation between us and I don't know if it would have been any different if I'd gone straight to the school as, as, and not gone to her at all to be honest because it was pretty bad what this boy was doing and it must have been really quite embarrassing for her but in general what the schools will tell you and everybody else is to not approach the other parent because you don't know how they're going to react. Um, and the schools need to know these things from an educational point of view. And as much as you want to go up to that child and strangle them, that's not a good idea either. <laughs> Sometimes your kids will have a huge falling out with someone who's been really nasty and then they decide they've forgiven them and they're refriending them. Keep an eye on that. Um, I think it's perfectly okay if somebody is, um, has been particularly cruel to your child to say, no, I don't want you to be a friend with that person. I think as a parent you have a right to that. Um, if something really bad happens online, you can go to that website address, cybersmart.gov.au and there's some report that places there where you can report um, criminal behaviour. Um, things like death threats or, you know, pedophiles or anything like that, you would go to them. If it's anything to do with pedophilia, you go directly to the police and they will point you in the right direction. So anything that's of a criminal nature, go straight to the police and anything that's, you know, pretty bad, try CyberSmart. That's obviously the government um, sponsored organisation. So talking about monitoring computer use as we were. Um, make some rules about computer use. I know a lot of parents have problems with kids just staying on the computers way too long, wanting to play games when they should be doing homework, all that sort of stuff. Make your own rules and every family has, has different rules. My rules are fairly strict. We don't have computer games during the week at all. We have computers for schoolwork. My 16 year old struggles between the schoolwork and the YouTube. Um, and we do try to get him off, but it gets more difficult as they get older because they basically use the computers instead of using TV. Neither of my children watch TV, for instance. Um, we restrict their computer use to certain times of the day over the weekend when they're allowed to be on it. And I know other families who decide they'll just have a time limit. So they'll say, you're only allowed on the computer two hours a day whether it's the weekend or, the, or during the week um, and they monitor that. For me the easiest thing to do was to set up a timetable to say okay during the week Monday to, Friday, Monday to Thursday um, 
this includes morning and evening. Um, there's no gaming, and the reason for that is because it's just way too hard to get them off the gaming for a start. Um, once they get, you know, what it's like, once they get on it, trying to get them off is almost impossible. They have enough to do with homework, and I would rather they did something else like, I don't know, read, go out, skateboard, play in the street, <laughs> something like that. And on the weekends, we limit to we limit it to um, before eleven o'clock in the morning, and then after three in the afternoon. I actually think that's probably too much. I'd like to cut it down even further than that. And I probably will, particularly as the kids start to get more homework. Um, and make sure they get up every hour and have a walk around if they're on the computer for a long time. Um, some kids have more interest in computers than others. You know, some kids have no interest in being on computers a lot. But whatever those rules are. You decide on what they are, stick to them, make them easy for you to maintain. Don't make it difficult for you. If they go over their limit, then simply deduct the amount of time that they've been over their limit from the next time they go on. Standing there shouting, get off, get off, get off, get off, <laughs> it just makes it hard work for you. So I just say to my kids, okay, you've been in half hour over your limit, so you can't get on till 3.30. Leonie, I and just, um, sorry to just interrupt you there, um, I found the other day uh, an internet contract for families, uh, it's on the Modern Parents website um, and it's also on, um, I've got a link to the blog post that I did the other day on Shush Mummies on the phone to um, five ways to keep your kids online, um, to keep kids safe online and I thought that was a really good um, concept, you yeah. popped it in writing, everybody's agreed on the terms and conditions, you keep it somewhere where everyone sees it on a regular basis and you've got something to refer to as well. I've just yeah, put the link exactly. up on the, on the chat box. Um, I'm also mindful, Leonie, we're just, on, um, just after 9 o'clock too. Okay, I've just speed it up. I also I have a contract in the back of my cyber safety book. So I've got a, a cyber safety book which is available online from my website um, and I have a contract in the back and I suggest you put it somewhere like a, a notice board or on the fridge so the kids know exactly what the, those rules are. So if we whip through these, um, yeah, set up some rewards and consequences instead of spying. So, you know, once you you can, once if they're doing the right thing, maybe get them some, you know, Microsoft Xbox points or an iTunes card or something that relates to what they're doing. Um, and the consequences are less time on the computer or whatever it is you decide. Um, there are locks you can get for laptops, by the way, so that you can lock it in place. A lot, a lot of the modern laptops have got a little spot where you can do that. Just go down to Dick Smith's and you can buy a lock down there. If you find they're sneaking it off to the bedroom and you don't want them to. With the smartphones, hold off buying smartphones for as long as possible. There's still quite a lot of phones out there like that Nokia you can see in the picture. There's what I call a dumb phone <laughs> um, that don't have a lot of stuff on it. It's great for keeping the kids in contact with you. Both my boys have got dumb phones and um, it just restricts their access. If you do get them a smartphone, you don't have to buy them a data down pack, you know, or connect it to the Wi-Fi. If you really want them to, to be able to contact you, then get them a phone where they, that's pretty much all it does. Um, with the, most of the smartphones, you can get um, a good phone, um, pay-as-you-go type card that doesn't involve data pack, which means they can't connect to the internet. Um, Phones and computers aren't private diaries, really, for your kids because everything's oh, so much stuff has been broadcast online. You know, our diaries weren't like that when we were growing up. So you do have, as a parent, up until a certain age at least, you know, the ability and the right to check check on something if you think something's not right. But be aware that has to be fairly exceptional circumstances because you're trying to develop uh, good responsibility and trust with your kids and. Um, it's not a good thing to have to want to grab the phone and check everything all the time. They'll always find ways around that anyway. You know, they'll hide things. They make if you you're friending them on Facebook, they'll make up another account that you don't know about. Um, friending your kids on Facebook is a good idea, by the way. Um, but as I said, if they really want to be naughty, <laughs> that's what they'll do. Monitor the apps that they're using on smartphones and iPods as well, and the games that they're downloading. Don't let them. Put a credit, you know, like create their own um, iTunes account with a with a, a uh, credit card on it. Use iTunes, um, you know, those iTunes cards that you buy from the supermarket. 
so that they, you know, it limits their access to that kind of stuff. Brainstorm with your kids, get them to set some limits and goals, um, the sorts of things, get them involved in the rules in your house about online behaviour um, and some ideas from rewards and consequences. And yes, agree on the contract. Okay, the YouTube safety setting. If you scroll down to the bottom of any YouTube page, you'll see that there's a, a safety setting down the bottom there with all the little fine print. All you have to do is click it on. If your kids are a bit older and you think they're going to try and click it off to see the more adult stuff, then you can password protect it. So it'll ask you for a password so you can lock it on. Um, you have to do that on every um, on every computer though, and you can't do it on the smartphones because it requires a browser and on the smartphones they have an app instead. Okay, with Facebook privacy, um, I'll just show you quickly where the settings are. That drop down menu next to the home button, go to the privacy settings. Make sure you don't just click friends up there. See how it's, you can just see the friends button? That's not enough. You actually have to go through every single one of those settings, read them and enable or disable them so that they're the most private settings that you can do. Um, particularly this one, how you connect. Make sure that you and the kids just have friends ticked for all those, not public, because that's what it defaults to, unfortunately. And just a that's reminder to everyone too that we've got this on record and you can, um, when we put it up on the website, you can fast forward to the, this section and you can pause it as well. So um, bring Leonie's yes, presentation yes. up and then you know, use it to reference as you're um, adjusting the privacy settings. One little trick I'm going to sh just show you now is to see what people see when they look at your profile or your mm. kids' profile. So you log in under your own profile. Right next to the activity log there, there's that little snowflake looking thing, which is a cogwheel. Click view as and what happens is it shows you what somebody totally unconnected to you will see of your profile, to see how private it is, to see what you show. A lot of people think they're only ever posting to friends, but there are a few things that get through and then you'll be able to start editing your profile back so that it's really nice and private. Um, with search engines, you don't want your kids writing in something into the search engines and coming up with porn. That's, that's it in a nutshell. So with Bing, if they're using that, just go to the preference that you saw there. Whoops a bit too fast, um, and click the, pr the privacy settings. With Google, um, to get to this safe search, just thinking where that, there it is there, that's the link to it. So you go to google.com forward slash preferences and it brings up that safe search which is a slider um, and it's great if you've got younger kids particularly under 10 years old, you can lock it on if you want and what that does is it stops them from pulling up adult content when they're searching for something quite innocent for you know the school project or whatever. Um, we've been through the phone security basically. That's great advice around that. Um, apps, find yeah. the phone. The Google search, mm, oh you need fantastic. it. The amount of people, a friend of mine had a little girl who was 10, she yeah. was looking for a picture of a woman with a dog. Right, say no more. Yes. <laughs> She hadn't even had the birds and bees talk. Yeah, gosh. With phones, kids get bullied by SMS. There are a few apps around which, where you can block particular people calling and sending you messages. So just look up SMS blocker um, in the App Store on iPhone or Android or other smartphones and you can install that. So if somebody's continually sending them an SMS and they don't want it, they can block that person and block the caller. Um, and we're just finishing up now. Don't forget to update your computer security. Um, update your virus software every time or your, your OS software. Turn your firewalls and modems and computers on. There's a lot of really nasty uh, viruses going around at the moment which can completely wipe your, mm. your hard drive. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Back everything up. Um, and give the same talk to your kids about not downloading mods and stuff like that um, that are potentially virus-ridden. And that's the short version. 
I have a two hour version that I do. This is the short one. <laughs> well, I, the longer one I go into a lot more of the settings and everything and show you and I've also got a workshop that I give parents where you can bring your computers along, sit down and we can go step by step through all the Facebook settings, all the Google settings, all the YouTube settings. So keep that in mind for a later date. That's fantastic. The um, that just you know those last few slides, especially where you had the settings, I, I didn't know about at least three of those. So I'm going to update that straight away. That's really good. Um, what software, um, uh, via antivirus software or security software, do you use, or would you recommend? I use Sophos. I'm on a Mac, and that's S O P H O S. They have a free version for Mac, which is excellent. Yeah. Um, AVG also have another great uh, version which is free. Um, Kapersky, there's lots of different ones, but um, it depends on whether you're on Windows or Mac. But um, they have a Windows version, I think, so far, but I think it's a paid one. Right. But if even with a Mac, like people uh, used to say, Macs are immune. They're not any longer, mm. unfortunately. As of this year, there's been a couple of really nasty viruses. So make sure you do have a Mac antivirus software on your computer as well and just keep make sure you update that um, you know where you get the updates either on Windows or on Mac yep a lot of those updates are by antivirus um, updates so make sure you do that on both Windows and Mac Fantastic. Leonie, thank you so much. Um, as Leonie mentioned before, she's very accessible. She is on Twitter and on Facebook. But also, um, if you go to her website, uh, the cybersafetylady.com.au, she's got a huge amount of information on there. The blog has got lots of different um, content around security, um, cyberbullying and also just keeping yourself up to date about the latest and greatest things. Um, Leonie's also got her um, ebook that she mentioned previously. I put a link on the underneath the chat box um, to it, but if you go to her website, you'll be able to click on the the book on the home page. Um, and I would after. I mean, I always knew that Leonie knew her stuff because I regularly go into her website and and see what she's popping up on Facebook. She quite often puts lots of status updates about. Um, things to watch out for so she's a source of information but I would yeah strongly recommend especially after tonight I've certainly learned probably about 20 new things that I didn't know <laughs> previously oh good uh, yeah definitely I really recommend that you um you get in contact with Leone and um and yeah use her her cyber safety brain yeah well find out if your schools have got had cyber safety talks mm. Um, there as well because um, I'm available to give talks at any of the schools and the workshops are really, really valuable if you can sit down with your computer and go through it all. Um, that's really educational and just sets things up for you the right way. And I also do home consultations for people so families will get me in. I'll have a look at all your iPods, your iPads, all your computers and make sure that everything's set up securely um, because that can be a bit of a minefield for mm. people. And you can also do Skype consultations and things like that for people who um, who aren't oh, yeah. around Sydney. So you yeah. can give, give them a bit of guidance around all of those settings. To yeah, I can do air. screen sharing, which I do mm -hmm. quite often. I do screen sharing with people yeah. where I can just basically go through your. I can go through your Facebook account with you, and just go tick 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 tick. tick. I won't yeah. explain anything to you, so it's nice and quick. But I'll just go through and say, let's tick this off, turn this off, <laughs> and just get it all get it all happening so that you know people uh, that it's secure and and um, your stuff isn't going to be shared all over the internet. That's great. Okay, brilliant. All right. Thank you, Leonie. Thank you so much for, um, for Thanks for having in me, Penny. And it was presenting. fun. And um, thank you, everybody else who um, were online and, and um, learnt so much tonight. When you log off, when we end the webinar, it will just come up with a survey, which will take you about, oh, I don't know, 18 seconds to complete, <laughs> so not long at all. But if you could complete that for us, that would be brilliant. Um, it just helps us keep the um, the standard up to the level that you you want um, and that you need. All right, thank you, Leonie. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for popping on by. Thanks, and Penny. We'll Thanks, everyone. We'll put the recording up soon for you. Thanks, guys. Good night. <laughs>